Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Welcome to His Holiness Chandamali Maharaj's daily online discourses. Thank you all for joining. And today's class uh, will be given. Hare uh, Krishna, Prabhuji, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, can you start live? Mataji, there is some problem with the authentication. Oh, okay. So I can. Okay, then leave it, Prabhu. Yeah, okay. Sorry about that. So today's class will be uh, given by His Grace Kanchanabja Prabhu. Uh, and we will be continuing with Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 11, uh, verse 13. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory, Shushila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Shushila Prabhupada. All glories to His Holiness Chanda Bodhidharma. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Um, so we just start it. Should we carry on with this text? Yes, Prabhuji. Okay, so we're reading from Canto 1, Chapter 11, text number... 13. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Gopura Dwara Margeshu Krita Kotu Katoranam Chitra Dwaja Patagagre Anta Prati Hatatapam Translation, the city gateway, the household doors and festooned arches along the roads were all nicely decorated with festive signs like plantain trees and mango leaves, all to welcome the Lord. Flags, garlands and painted signs and slogans all combined to shade the sunshine. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Signs of decoration in special festivals were also collected from the gifts of nature, such as the plantain trees, the mango trees, fruits and flowers. Mango trees, coconut palms and plantain trees are also are still accepted as auspicious signs. The flags mentioned above were all painted with the picture of either Garuda or Hanuman, the two great servitors of the Lord. For devotees, such paintings and decorations are still adored, and the servitor of the master is paid more respects for the satisfaction of the Lord. Jay, thank you. I will just chant the Mangala Charan prayers. Om Gyanti Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Militam Yena Tasme Shri Guruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Vayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Sa Padantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Scha Shri Rupam Sagajatam Sagana Raguna Tanvitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Pada Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radha Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha kalpa tarubhyascha, kripa sindhubhya evacha, patita nam bhavanebhyo, vaishnavebhyo namo namaha. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadada, Shri Vasari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you very much. So here we are um, in the first canto in the 11th chapter, reading text number 13, Lord Krishna's entrance into Dwarka. So Krishna's coming back 
to Dwarka after spending such a long time away. Um, he spent such a long time away from Dwarka um, because he went to Hastinapur, um, spent some time in Hastinapur, should we say, after the Kurukshetra war. And then finally, after many months, after a long time, he decided he should go back to Dwarka. Um, and now he's coming back into Dwarka and everyone is very excited. The Dwarka residents are so excited that they get to see Krishna again after so long. And here, um, what's being described is how um, everything has been decorated, how the whole, the city gateway, the household doors, everything was nicely decorated, all these auspicious signs, um, which Prabhupada has described, these plantain trees, the mango leaves, all these auspicious signs have all been used to welcome, welcome Krishna back. Um, and the flags and garlands, and and, and here in the purport, um, Srila Prabhupada explained the flags. He said the flags mentioned above were all painted with the picture of either Garuda or Hanuman, the two great servitors of the Lord. Um, and he says the servitor of the master is paid more respect, more respects for the satisfaction of the Lord. So that is the reason why, um, why the Lord is or should we say why the devotees are respected the servitor of the master is paid more respects because it's for the satisfaction of the lord so it's very interesting here as Srila Prabhupada is making it very clear that when when the servant is paid respect this is what gives satisfaction to the lord some you know we hear very often don't commit Vaishnav Aprad. Don't how, how often do we hear this? How often do we hear don't commit Vaishnav Aprad? Vaishnav Aprad is the one thing we need to stay away from. Vaishnav Aprad is the one thing that we need to be so careful about. We need to just really make sure we don't commit Vaishnav Aprad. Um, but if we look on the other side of it, which Prabhupada is giving here, the other angle is that. Well, if we pay respects to the devotees, this gives satisfaction to Krishna. This is what gives satisfaction to Krishna. So we can see the other side. Um, how can we satisfy the Lord? How can we please the Lord? And how can we please the Lord? By offering respects. Sometimes we think that we need to disrespect someone in order to show our um, allegiance to the Lord. I'm going to show my allegiance to the Lord by disrespecting someone. In the Ramayan, something very interesting happened when, um, when Ram and Sita, or should I say Ram was banished. He, went, he was banished to go to the forest. We all know the story. Uh, 14 years was the exile uh, 14 years to go and live in the forest and the other thing that Queen KK had demanded was that Ram uh, relinquished the idea of becoming the king and Bharat becomes the king instead. So Ram uh, agrees to go to, to the forest and he was still very respectful. He was still very respectful when KK said to him um, because Dashrath couldn't, when Ram came to the the room of King Dashrath, when he was asked, when when he went, when he was summoned to come and see the king, uh, king the king couldn't speak. The king was so shocked by what KK had asked of him, he was so shocked at these two um, boons that she wanted to reprieve and say, I want these two things, Ram to go to the forest for 14 years and for Bharat to become the king. He was so, so shocked um, that he couldn't speak to Ram. He couldn't, Dashrat just couldn't say to Ram what he what he had got, what 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 his two boons that he had given KK, where that had landed him and what, what trouble that had got him into. And then KK at that moment was feeling very cold hearted. She was feeling very strong. She was feeling in, intensely desirous of her own welfare. And she said to Ram in a, very, in a very cold way, we could say, that the king 
he hasn't he hasn't got the um the guts to speak right now but what what this is what um this is what needs to be done you need to go to the forest and bharat will need to go become the king and and ram says to his mother or his stepmother we could say he says to stepmother kk kk or not kk oh mother uh, why did you why all these years i've thought of you as my mom and i thought that you thought of me as your son and then he says that if i was your son if you thought of me as your son you wouldn't have had to use your two boons um on sending me to the forest if you just asked me directly i would have happily agreed so ram even in this most difficult moment in this most difficult moment is still remembering to be respectful so when he when he when lord ram comes he, he comes um to show how how we can deal with others respectfully um he's he's coming here his his whole descent was to show what it means to be an ideal king but along with being an ideal king he shows how to be an how to be an ideal human being how to um how to really uh show respectful etiquette and and he was very respectful he was very respectful of the boons of his father uh, or should you say the word of his father he was very res- he was so respectful that this is the word of a kshatriya king my kshatriya father and i don't want his words to go in vain or his promise to go in vain so he'll go to the forest and not one at not one point did he show any disrespect and whenever disrespect was um was shown um ram was very quick to correct others who were being disrespectful so when lakshman heard this news lakshman was very very angry was very very upset lakshman was ready to kill his own father he was he he had so much love for ram he couldn't control that love he had for ram and because he couldn't control that love for ram he said oh ram oh brother i will kill the king at once and ram had to stop him ram said calm down calm down brother calm down lakshman so he stopped lakshman from getting too worked up because to him the art of respect was so important um uh, prabhupada is saying here that when we are when we are paying respects to the servant um of the master that gives great satisfaction so ram is showing us how we can pay respect to the servants um, and when we pay respects to the servants of the lord then he becomes satisfied so then ram goes to the ram goes to the forest um and when he goes to the forest meanwhile at this time uh, bharat and satrugan they are um they are left they are well they were in the kk province because they went to the maternal home of kk and they and they came back and they realized that ram had been they they ayodhya became like a ghost town they realized something has gone wrong here and the one thing they realized well, when they realized what happened um bharat and satrugan were just so 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 distraught they were so mad at the situation and at one point satrugan he sees he he sees mantra and mantra and kk were probably the only two happy people in ayodhya you know they were just so they, they had a they had a be about their bonnet as they say in the uk that they, they were they were they were dancing with joy in one set they were happy they had a spring in their step um and one day satrugan sees mantra just looking all jolly and happy and walking around and he just got so mad he started to chase her he started to chase her around and she ran and she ran and she was running towards kk for mantra was running towards kk and one of the guards who was also just so mad at mantra caught mantra and gave her to satrugan and satrugan started to shake her satrugan started to shake mantra he was so mad at her he was so angry and bharat then comes along and bharat says to satrugana um bharat says to satrugan you what you are doing to mantra i even feel like doing to my own mother 
KK. I want to do this to my own mother. I feel like doing this. But then if we think about who, what is the purpose of us doing what we are doing right now? What is the purpose of us harming mantra? What is the purpose of me wanting to harm KK? And the purpose is that we are just so distraught that Ram has left Ayodhya. And because we love Ram so much, we are feeling that this is what we should do. But this is not what will please Ram. Ram is not going to be pleased if we are going to be disrespect mantra or if we are going to disrespect KK. So ultimately then Satugan realized, yes, that actually the purpose for my anger, the purpose for me wanting to be disrespectful is because I have love for Ram. And then if I think about my love for Ram, and if I think about the person for whom I am feeling this way, this person, would, would my love for Ram should trump any negative emotion. My positive emotion of love for Ram should overcome the negative anger I'm, and, and animosity I'm feeling towards KK and towards Mantra. And therefore, Satrugan realized that actually, if I want to please the person for whom, for whom I am doing this, I need to stop being disrespectful. And then Satrugana, um, he had to, he had to, um, he let go of mantra. Um, why? Because Krishna, Ram, the Lord, is very, very satisfied when we are respectful. And when we are disrespectful, even if, even if, um, we are hurt by um, the actions of another devotee. Um, at, it is not going to help us by being disrespectful towards that person. It's not going to help us by being disrespectful towards that devotee. Um, and 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 so Lak he Ram showed Lakshman when Lakshman wanted to kill um, Dasrat. Um, Ram is uh, through through the through the um, the heart of Bharat is explaining to is explaining to Satrugan that yes, this is not the right thing to do. Don't don't become violent for my sake right now. Um, be respectful. Be respectful. Um, even later on, actually, when they were in Chitrakut, when Ram, Lakshman and Sita were in Chitrakut, um, at that time Bharat wanted to go to the forest and explain to Ram that actually, look, you come, you go back to Ayodhya and let me take your place in the forest. So when um, Bharat left for uh, Chitrakut, pr practically the whole of Ayodhya wanted to come with Bharat. So like a whole army came, um, the, the, the three mothers came, um, they all came to Ayodhya to say to, to they all, sorry, they all came to Chitrakut, they all went to the forest to say to Ram, look, please come back home, please come back to Ayodhya. And when Bharat was approaching, when Bharat was approaching Chitrakut, Lakshman saw him. And when Lakshman saw Bharat, Lakshman started getting so angry. He started to think automatically that this Bharat, he's come here because him and KK have been conspiring this whole time and I'm going to finish Bharat right away. Um, Lakshman had this impulsive love for Ram and Ram said to Lakshman, my dear brother, calm down. I do not think this is the reason why Bharat has come. And then, and then after, and then, and then afterwards, when Bharat came and Bharat did exactly what Ram knew he would do, try to offer him back the kingdom, try to swap places um, uh, with Ram, and then eventually, um, Ram told Bharat he should go back because Ram made this promise to go to the forest, so he had to fulfill the promise. And Ram gave the shoes of. Uh, he he gave him he gave him his his slippers or his shoes and Bharat put those slippers on his head and went back to Ayodhya, and then Lakshman realized that oh my God why did I think this why did I think this, and and Ram says to Ram says to Lakshman that you're very emotional. You're very emotional, and Lakshman is saying okay, so is it wrong to be emotional, and Ram says to Ram says to. Uh, Lakshman, that emotion is 
the, the, the nature of, the, of humanity. We are all emotional beings. So no, it's not wrong to be emotional. However, we should be able to choose our positive emotions rather than our negative emotions. And he taught that through Bharat and Satrugna when he was, te when he was teaching um, Satrugna that actually the positive emotion is love. And when we have this, when we have a loving emotion, when we have these feelings of love, they should overcome emotions like anger. They should overcome emotions like fear. These are the emotions that can be overcome. But if we cannot overcome, uh, if we cannot tune in to our positive emotion, then what happens? We all know we succumb to our negative emotions. So it's very important that in testing times, we can remember what is the positive emotion within me that I can try to access. It's very difficult at some points, but this is what will please the Lord. Um, uh, it, can we pay more respects? Can we be more respectful to the servants of the Lord? Uh, we hear Lord Chaitanya in his in the Shikshastukam, in the most famous, we could say, Trinada Pisuni Chena Amanina Mana Dena. When we hear this verse, it can sound so lofty. It can sound so out there. It can sound like, how will I ever, ever, ever get to this stage? How will I ever, ever get to this stage of being more tolerant than a tree, more humble like a blade of grass? How can I become more humble like, than a blade of grass, more tolerant than a tree? How can I get to this place of desiring no respect for myself? How can I get to this place of desiring no respect? Because maybe I do desire respect for myself. So there's all these things um, that actually seem quite far away. Being more tolerant than a tree, being more humble than a blade of grass, and desiring no respect for oneself. But one thing that we can we can do, um, one thing that we can do is we can um, do manadena, offering all respects to others. If we offer all respects to others, we are accessing what we can do. Um, I don't know why the, this sound keeps coming is it from my computer or is it someone else's computer? Does it does does anyone know? I'm not sure if it's coming Maybe. from. My from mine, Prabhuji, just notification on one of the... Okay, uh, okay. I will disable it. Sorry about that. No, no, no problem, no problem. Okay. Uh, thank you, Prabhu. Um, so, yeah, so so we don't... We, when it comes to... Um, when it comes to that verse, to Nada Peace and Nietzsche, now, even though it feels like, oh, we can't be tolerant in a tree, we can't be humble like a blade of grass, we, we, we're still a little far away from desiring no respect for, for ourselves. We can all switch on the one part of that verse that we can access now. And the one part of that verse which we can access now is paying respects to others, being respectful to others. And one reason, one reason we might not be able to be so respectful to others is because maybe maybe we've not even learned how to respect ourselves, <laughs> you know? And sometimes if we're not able to even respect ourselves, then it's hard for us to respect others also. Now, what does it mean that we're not able to respect ourselves? Well, sometimes we're not real with ourselves. Um, and if we're not real with ourselves, we, we try and become, or we try and compare ourselves with a very idealistic version of ourselves. And when we try and compare ourselves to a very idealistic version of ourselves, for example, I must wake up at 3 a.m. every day, otherwise I'm a no-hoper. You know, I must learn every shloka in the Bhagavad Gita, I must learn every shloka in the Bhagavatam, or I'm a no-hoper. If we start to compare ourselves in a very, uh, to a very idealistic version of ourselves, then we will never ever feel that we are good enough. And if we feel that we are not good enough, we won't respect ourselves. We'll think of ourselves as this person who's just not good enough. We're not. We're not really. Um, we're not really re accepting that Krishna loves us just the way we are. 
we can't accept that Krishna loves us just the way we are. And if we can't accept that Krishna loves us just the way we are, then we don't accept ourselves, we don't respect ourselves. And if we cannot accept ourselves and we cannot respect ourselves, then what happens is we won't be able to respect others because we'll 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 try and we'll try and put this idealistic um expectation of ourselves onto others and when we put an idealistic expectation onto others and they are not quite matching our our version of ideal our version of what it means to be a devotee then what will happen we will disrespect them we just won't respect them and this is very very um, important especially when we get to be in close proximity with um, advanced devotees because when we are in close proximity of advanced devotees, then naturally what will happen is we'll start to see different sides of that personality. And when we see different sides of the personality and think, oh, hold on a second, look what they did there. They just ate something with their left hand. Or they, uh, yeah, we can, because in our ideal, we should never use, you know, like, uh, you know, like we should only use the right hand to take, yes, this is part of Vaishnava etiquette, but that doesn't mean we should put this hanging up expectation on everyone we see, or how, or, or this advanced devotee got angry at someone, or this advanced devotee, um, um, he misquoted a verse. Oh my God, they misquoted a verse. This devotee, uh, um, whatever it is, the point is, is that when we, when we have a very idealistic expectation of what it means to be a devotee, then what happens is, and if we compare ourselves to the ideal, we won't respect ourselves if we're not matching that ideal. And if we don't respect ourselves, even though we are not that ideal version of what we think it means to be a devotee, when we see others who are not quite matching our ideal expectation of a devotee, we won't be able to respect them either. And if we cannot respect someone, then what happens? Then naturally, um, we're not satisfying Krishna because that's what Prabhupada has just written in that purport that to satisfy the Lord we should be respectful of the servants of the master be respectful of the servants of the master um, it's very it's very interesting it's very interesting how respectful um, how respectful Krishna is of Arjun um, in the whole Bhagavad Gita Krishna is speaking to him um, at times like a teacher, at times like a friend, but overall very respectfully. You know, oh son of Kunti, you know, oh you know, very very oh great oh Mahabaho, oh great warrior. He he, he oh oh um um oh oh Partha. You know, he, he's very he's very um he's very respectful. He's very respectful of Arjuna. Krishna is very respectful to the devotees um, because the devotees are the life and soul of the Lord. And so for us, yes, the devotees may <laughs> the devotees may upset us, the devotees may uh, <laughs> get on our nerves. Uh, but overall, if we can just hold this this value of respect for the devotees, hold this value of just respect, just a respectful attitude overall to others, and then naturally we'll be able to invoke Krishna's mercy more and more and more. Um, because this is it. He, he's coming into Dwarka. Uh, he's coming into Dwarka. Everyone's welcoming him. And these flags have Garuda. They have Hanuman. Um, why? Because this is how, this is what will please the Lord if we can be respectful. So maybe we can stop there and maybe we can see if the devotees have some um, points they'd like to discuss uh, on this verse and some maybe we can have some reflections also thank you very much Hare Krishna thank you very much Prabhuji for a wonderful session you brought out some finer points from that uh, small purport which was quite important relating it back to the the qualities of Lord Ramachandra Bharatma and uh, from the Ramayan so thank you very much Prabhuji so dear devotees um I would appreciate if we can turn on, on our cameras to make it more personal. And uh, yes, if you have any questions, realizations, uh, please go ahead. Uh, I've always seen Chilpesh Prabhu has already put his hand up. So yes, Prabhuji, go ahead. 
Krishna comes in and Prabhuji, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Guru Maharaj, all glories to Prabhupada. Wow, what a one, wonderful, wonderful class. It's it's like you did it just for me today. <laughs> I really I really needed to hear this. I just want to say, yeah, I'm gonna to have to watch it a few times and really reflect on it because it's very, very deep. And you know, some, sometimes it's like when I have been disrespected by the devotees, it's like, yeah, you want to get you want to take out some kind of revenge. Mm. But then it's like you realize, well, Krishna knows what's happened. But then I want Krishna to take revenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm beginning to learn that. Yeah, everybody's Krishna's devotees and we're all going through this material mess together one way or another and things will happen. And uh, yeah, somehow we've got to find a place to forgive, forget mm. and move on and continue respecting each other. But uh, thank you so much. Lovely, really lovely. Thank you, Sopesh Prabhu. Yeah, it's very... Um... It, it's 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 very fascinating isn't it how we how if we, we we think to ourselves someone has hurt me and i'm going to do the honorable thing by not uh trying to seek revenge but deep inside the heart there's a desire that that person really really gets it you know this person really gets the punishment because how dare they hurt me how dare they how dare they um touch my heart in a negative way how dare they and we feel this and then we can think back to krishna um who is, and he says and he says to arjun in the gita um suridam sarvabhutanam i am the well wisher of all the living entities and by being the well wisher of all the living entities um and he is god and we want to be godly then part of being godly is um, being the well-wisher of all the living entities. Uh, and something that we actually discussed, I think, in one of the other sessions here, was that even those that have hurt us, if we can pray that this person learns their lesson in the most um, joyous way possible. Because the reason we generally want someone to... Uh, to be punished, we should say, to be punished, is because we go back to it and we think, actually, we, we want them to learn their lesson. They shouldn't have done that to me. They shouldn't have done that to me. So why is it that we want them to learn that lesson by receiving some sort of pain? And a lot of the time we think that we want that person to learn their lesson by receiving pain because we think that through that pain, they'll connect with us better. You know, that they'll now feel they'll now be able to feel what they did to me because I'm in so much pain. And if they receive this pain, they'll understand what they did to me. And, and through that pain, there's that connection and that understanding of what they did. But if we think about ourselves, we don't want to learn our lessons. We don't want to learn our lessons through pain. We want to learn our lessons in the most joyous and happiest way. We want to learn our lessons. We want to become better devotees but we want to learn them in a way that we can still be happy and joyous in our Krishna consciousness. Um, but the only way we can really invoke lessons um, in a happy and joyous way um, is if we can wish that on others. Because what we give to the world ultimately is what comes to us. So if we can wish, can we, if we can be a well-wisher of others, especially those that have hurt us, and um, then what we'll be able to do is invoke that uh, mercy of Krishna to come to us and generally speaking we do get opportunities to learn lessons in a happy and joyous way the problem is we don't learn them then we we generally wait for a crisis and when a crisis happens we, we are forced to learn but if we learn the lessons generally in our life as they come uh, then when the crisis happens we're ready for the crisis. Just like if someone, just like if someone says, um, like you're you're studying in class, and one day the teacher comes and surprise, surprise, it's a it's a surprise homework or surprise exam today. It's a surprise exam. So if it's a surprise exam, those that have been preparing anyway will still pass. But those that wait till the last minute, they won't pass because they thought the exam was still in a few weeks' time. Um, so yes, we can just always be in that mood to learn, be in that mood to grow in our life day to day, 
not always wait for the crisis. Um, then um, when the crisis comes, we're in a better place and we're also, we're also then um, in a better consciousness to wish well on others and uh, not have that vengeful uh, desire in our heart. So thank you so much, Silkashpur, for raising these points. It's, uh, you know, they're very important and very real for devotees who are trying their best to purify their heart, but we're all struggling with that. So thank you, Silkashpur. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Um, Raj Prabhu, uh, please go ahead. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Prabhupada, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Guru Maharaj, all glories to you, Prabhu, and all of the Vaishnavas. Yes. <laughs> uh, I wanted to explore the thing that you said about we need to learn to respect ourselves because there's lots of things that uh, get in the way of that. Like, for example, we know that we need to avoid becoming. Uh, we need to avoid pride. We know that we have so many faults. We know that we have so many inatas. We know that we have a long way to go. So, what should the what should the focus be on? Should it be on where we are now at all, or should it be shifting to forget where we are now and just concentrate on what are we doing? Can you, maybe repeat, how are we can, you that, can you repeat that last bit, Raj Prabhu? Uh, so I, I got we... I got the bit you said about we have all these about self-respect, mm. and then and then you mentioned that we have different different blocks and obstacles, for example, pride mm. that get in the way of that. And you said something right at the end, and I think I just missed it. Uh it's just like what should our focus be on? Because mm. Should we avoid focusing on what should we focus on? Should we just avoid focusing on where we are? Or should we just focus on what we're doing? Um, I think I, I think I think when it comes to focus um, in spiritual life, there needs to be um, there needs to it, it doesn't it doesn't need to be static. Um, focus can be I know that and it kind of ruins it kind of spoils that word focus doesn't it because focus just means one thing usually I'm going to focus on this I'm going to focus on that but it's just like if it's just like when we hear in Kali Yuga that chanting is the most important right chanting is the most but we know Harinam 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 there's no other way no other way no other way so Prabhupada could have come here and just established chanting um, but he didn't, you know, he still established things like deity worship. He still established um, uh, Sankirtan, you know, all these different uh, uh, book distribution, temples and all these different things. Why to actually, because all these things facilitate um, the chanting of the holy name. So, yes, we, we want to um, we want to get to that point of selflessness, definitely. And we should we should focus on trying to become more selfless how can we become more selfless see the journey from selfishness to selflessness is is becoming more and more sensitive the more and more sensitive we become to others we become more selfless so yes we should practice on being more sensitive to others because by being more sensitive to other to others and their needs we are becoming more selfless but also part of becoming selfless is also spending some time introspecting where we are at in our journey and when we introspect and reflect on where we are in our journey and get to know ourselves and what our blocks are and what our narthas are we're doing this because we want to get to this place of being a selfless servant of the lord so even if we say the focus is to become a selfless servant part of that focus is still working on ourselves you see, part of that is still, I need to work on myself. I need to see where I'm at. I need to see that this pride is here. I need to see that this envy is here. I need to be able to see it because then when I can see it, when I can feel it, then I can really start to release it. 
But if I try and ignore all these things and just think I'm going to become a selfless servant of the Lord, then we try and do this spiritual bypassing. And that bypassing is we're trying to bypass um, who we are to become, to chase the utopian, um, um, I'm a pure devotee, I want to be a pure devotee tomorrow. But it doesn't work because you end up stepping on so many people on the way. And that like that, and what's happening is our pride is there, but we're not noticing it. So I think I think the word focus is yes, we want to focus on the goal, but that part of that focus is also dealing with other things, um, including ourselves. I hope that makes some sense. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, Krishna. Hi, Krishna Prabhu. Thank you Hi, very Krishna. much for thank you very much for another outstanding lecture. Thank you so much. Pirta Kirti Mataji, you're always very encouraging. Um, I'm always, always, always so grateful. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Um, Supriya Mataji, you had a question. You raised your hands. I don't know whether you still want to go ahead and ask or was it in an error? No, Prabhuji, I have no more Okay. So, Sri Devi Mataji, uh, have your hands up. Please go ahead and ask your question. Thank you. Dear Kanchanabhya Prabhu, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Agurudev. So, this introspection, as you rightly said, devotee needs to introspect. And I'm wondering that if, in spite of being cautious, in spite of being careful, in spite of trying one's best, one finds oneself in a negative situation, a toxic situation. What is the best way to handle it with the least amount of that negativity coming on to you? Mm. Yeah, if, what if we've done our best? But at the same time, even though we're doing our best, um, that negativity in a toxic situation still comes on to us. And sometimes, I think the main thing is, like you said there, Mataji, that we have done our best. You know, you know that you have the right to perform your duty. And and I think a lot. One thing I really, one thing with that verse, with that verse in the Gita. Um, which really struck me was when I was discussing it with one devotee, I said, I said, I'm doing everything I can. <laughs> I'm doing everything I can to please this person. I'm doing everything I can. But still, they're not pleased. Still, it's like this. And still, what it, and it's this. And they don't appreciate me. And they don't understand me. And they don't respect me. And I'm trying my best. And I'm really doing my duty. But this person's not understand. This the person is not appreciating how much I'm doing for them. And, and then and then I was discussing it, and then we got to this point of understanding what is Krishna saying, Tamani that you have the right to perform your duty, which means when you're performing your duty, you're doing it for yourself in one sense. You're performing your duty because you are doing what you need to do in this world. Not necessarily that you're doing your duty so that someone else appreciates or that someone else um takes account that you're doing your duty for, for like for example, if I'm doing the duty for my child. As a father, I have duties for my children, but my children, if they never appreciate, um, what can I do apart from I still have to do my duty? But if we find ourselves in a toxic situation and we can really, 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 really say to ourselves, you know, we can look at our Guru Maharaj in the eye and say, I've done everything I can. I've done everything I can. And, you know, you can sit in front of your spiritual master and say that eye to eye, you know, then you know that you've really done your duty. Then ultimately, for some reason, whatever that reason is, um, Krishna still wants us to grow. And 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 growing, growing may doesn't necessarily mean staying in a toxic situation. Sometimes growing means um having the strength to learn how to speak up for yourself in a toxic situation. Because sometimes we try and be um, we try and blame it on the other person, but why not? Why can't we also think actually I need to learn how to become stronger? 
Arjun had to become strong. You know, he was in he was in that battlefield, and he had to become he had to become internally strong to go and kill Bhishma. You know, that's like it required a lot of internal strength. It wasn't that Krishna said, um, "You're in this very toxic situation. Um, you you know you 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 need to learn how to tolerate." Um, and and just just to see how many arrows can hit you. You're a Kshatriya. No, his duty was a bit different. Um, so sometimes being in a being in a toxic situation, and sometimes having sometimes being um, having been called upon internally that we need to change something. Sometimes what we need to change is how we are becoming more assertive. You know, um, we either we in a toxic situation, what happens? Someone generally becomes um, aggressive um, or, or has someone has a lot of passive anger um, and and just finding that middle ground of being assertive, being able to be firm, being able to stand up for yourself and say, um, Hare Krishna this is not acceptable um, you know, this is not acceptable you, at the same time not, 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 not giving in to inner negative emotions but still standing up for yourself. I think there's a lot to be said about learning how to do that when in a toxic situation there's just a few thoughts i'm not sure if i um if i was answering your question correctly mataji but there was a few thoughts that came along yeah at least it uh, sent me on thinking along the right track because uh, at least when you're in that situation your brain is clouded mm. so clearly so just the very fact that you said that you have choices that itself is a big deal Secondly, you said you can choose to get stronger. You can choose to get better. That's another tip. So I'm grateful for the help. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Prevati Mataji, do you want to go ahead? Yes, uh, Prabhuji. Yeah. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji, for the very, very nice class. Uh, yeah, class is really for me only. It's very beautiful. Uh, so much to learn. Um, uh, so, Prabhuji, I have a question about um, like uh, paying uh, respects to others, uh, right? So, we um, uh, reason, uh, as you mentioned, like you're not real to yourself. That is also one reason that uh, we are not being respectful to others. Sometimes uh, it also happens like uh, we might not get a good vibrations from that they, we might not be treated mm, mm. Uh, from others also so in the process we develop uh, negative emotions um, when we we may not express at gross level but at subtle level we may not have a respect for that person uh, so how to handle like those situations yeah it's so hard isn't it but, you know, we can kill it with kindness. You know, if we can be kind, if we can be that ambassador of love, if we can still be respectful to them, then eventually that that kindness and that love will, will, will deal with that situation in time. A lot of the time, if we think about why are we, why are we feeling um, disrespected or, you know, someone ignores us, uh, you know, we're at the temple and someone doesn't say Hare Krishna, they just ignore us or they kind of treat us like we're just nothing or we just feel this. what happens sometimes is because of our own internal dialogue, you know, our own internal dialogue that is my existence worthy? You know, sometimes we have these um, these internal dialogues and, and then what happens is we're trying to prove the worthiness of our, of our existence to others. We're trying to. We don't even realize we're doing it, but we're trying to. We're trying to. Um, we're trying to become this person, or this. This. We're trying to. We. We. We are. How. How can I say it? We are trying to um, see the value in ourselves through the lens of others, and if others value me, then I'll feel valued within myself. Right, and because we have this, sometimes some of us have this, then what happens is we are giving the power of our own happiness to someone else. Because if this other person doesn't say Hare Krishna to me, I'm going to feel negative, low. If this person treats me in a certain way, I'm going to feel low. So, what we're doing is we're saying, I don't want the power in my own life, I want to give the power of my life to someone else. But by giving that power to someone else, we're disarming ourselves 
of the opportunity to grow we're disarming ourselves of the opportunity to love so why not that we can keep that power to ourselves and whether this person disrespects me or doesn't disrespect me or respects me or doesn't respect me i respect myself and because i respect myself and i give value to myself i understand that krishna loves me i understand that krishna values me then i will still be respectful to them it's nothing to do with it the way they treat us is nothing to do with us that's all to do with them we take it as if it's to do with us because we 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 take it personally but how someone treats us is their problem and how we treat others is in our power so if we just try and shift that consciousness you know just just take that shift that my existence is not dependent on the way they treat me my existence is dependent on the way i treat myself and the way i'm trying to develop a relationship with the lord i don't know if that helps but that's what came yes. to mind yes yes prabhu yeah always like whenever someone disrespects we should not uh, put ourselves down like uh, try to live up to their expectations instead like you have to respect yourself and um, also respect others in the same yeah and if we kind to them it's like i remember there's this one devotee and i think like maybe i think she's a senior devotee at the temple at the temple here and i think many 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 years ago i i i did something that upset her and for many many years i tried so hard um to to just still be respectful say hari krishna should ignore me sometimes sometimes she you know just say something but she's very much much more senior to me and i kept thinking to myself that i'm not going to um i'm not going to do the same back you know i'm just going to keep saying hari krishna i'm still going to be polite say hari krishna still try and smile and whatever happens i'm just going to still do that and i think 10 years went by and it was still the same and then one kartik every day i was going for mangal aarti and this mataji was going for mangal aarti so often we'd just bump into each other in the showroom or something and still i'd say hari krishna and then one one day um one day she just started talking hey how have you been how's family i've seen you with your two girls da, da, da. and we just started talking and, and and you just realize and i just realized to myself at that time that even if someone doesn't like me if someone's being rude to me and i could probably say this mataji was being rude sometimes um still if we're just still being kind and still if we're just trying our best to be respectful and no matter what they're doing because what they're doing is their is their thing if we're just doing our bit then at some point the kindness will take over the situation and the kindness will always prevail um and then you can leave them to do what they need to do if they're going through the, if whatever they're going through in their own juggle of mind that's up to them but we can always um be steady in in how we treat others so yeah Yes, yeah. Thank you, Prabhuji. Yeah, very practical explanation. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Hi, Krishna. I have another question, maybe. Mm. Yes, yeah. Prabhuji, please go ahead. Like um, this is like um, uh, like a self introspection. Uh, it's very important, as you said, Prabhuji. But uh, when we are doing self introspection and also suppressing yourself, like you know. okay you are introspecting and also like suppressing how to differentiate both like we don't want to suppress our feelings in the process of self introspection yeah and and how would you just so i understand better revati mataji how would you say self introspection is suppression how would you link that uh you are trying to correct yourself always like mm. guru and krishna uh sometimes like you know you might be right but you still try to introspect and you try to suppress yourself okay okay so you're saying that through introspection i i might try and just correct myself but then i might not say what needs to be said to someone else and that can be suppressive is that what you're saying yes yes yeah i think that's a really good point i think i think what the whole purpose of the introspection isn't to suppress yourself is to do the exact opposite the whole purpose of introspection so if you do introspection through let's say journaling and you're writing through um 
you're writing how you're feeling you're writing what's going on for you you're you're actually digging into your heart you're digging into your mind and understanding yourself and understanding where it is what what part of it became difficult for you and why it became difficult for you and how you dealt with the situation um so that's one one side of it things will just become clearer for you and what why why a certain situation affected you and why a certain situation how it upset you but as you are as you are introspecting and especially if you're doing this through journaling and through writing and i generally find this sometimes when i'm writing i end up coming to a conclusion that actually this was just me and the drama going on in my own mind and i actually don't need to say anything but sometimes what comes to me through introspection is i need to address this and then i start to write what's the best way for me to address this in a respectful way and then what the what the introspection will help you do is do the exact opposite of suppression the introspection can actually lead you to a place of expression with respect and when we can express with respect then we're not going to be suppressed at the same time we won't just become we won't just speak in an over emotional way we'll be able to speak in a um in a meaningful way that someone can actually understand um so actually introspection should help us do the exact opposite of suppression because we can get to a point of actually um you've upset me this is what i need to, to discuss how can i discuss this with you do i need another third par party there when i have this conversation with the other person or do i have enough of a relationship to speak to them one to one how should i do it all these things you can write and you'll able to, you'll be able to create a situation where um that introspection has really really helped your expression um and it it will be the exact opposite of suppression actually yeah okay bravo i think i need to address the things and also do it in a more respectful way yeah as you said yeah i'll yeah. try yeah and it's not it's not always a good idea to think it's all me and um uh, everything yeah there are things we need to work out but if there's a conversation that needs to be had sometimes like we were saying earlier um we can become stronger and we become become more we can grow through a being able to have difficult conversations um but we can do it respectfully definitely how did it make you feel rather than rather than you did this and you did that but how did it make you feel and if you express to someone how some how you how you were left feeling then that conversation can be um actually very empowering for both of you you and the other person thank you thank you so much prabhu yeah thank I... you hi krishna thank you mataji um prabhu ji just just a comment from anahita mataji uh, she says thank you so much for this class i feel like krishna is speaking through you and i needed to hear this and going through this something like this now hi krishna anahita mataji hope john and the little one are doing well hari bol hari bol Everybody thank you so much for this class honestly i'm just nine is currently riding her bike oh beautiful hello <laughs> i'm just picking up and stuff <laughs> no no say hello happy birthday hello yeah um, so you know i just want to say thank you honestly i'm going through something um like this and it's been so wonderful to hear so I definitely for krishna is speaking for you uh, yes hello krishna nice to hear from you everybody I think no, no. any more questions comments okay oh uh, so priya mata ji has raised her hand uh, this is general question uh, i i said i saw that there was a message by mata ji on on whatsapp group saying that gm had asked uh, all of us to report him over email of a regular updates okay now is this for, for all the official disciples his disciples or is it uh, for every one of us who attend this daily class um i believe it's for the disciples and aspiring disciples 
I, I, I believe that was the for the for the monthly email. But at the same time, if you'd like to contact Guru Maharaj, I'm sure you're more than welcome to send him an email whenever you like. But I think the the requirement or the, the I wouldn't say requirement, but the the request um, for that monthly email was for the disciples and aspiring disciples of Chandra Muli Maharaj. Okay, I don't have an Inji's email ID. Um, I think if you if you if you message Srimati Mataji on the WhatsApp, then she can send it to you. Maybe we can clarify this this one with him directly. Is that good idea? Sorry. Yes. Yeah, go on. Uh, can we clarify uh, this one with him directly? Uh, so Guru Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, what we will what we can do is uh, we can take this uh, I can take this question back to Srimati Mataji and she can coordinate with Maharaj and get back to you. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, okay. Hare Krishna Supriya Mataji. Um, oh, Maharaj yeah. is not available this week um, on the daily call. So as uh, Prabhuji said, um, I'll contact uh, Guru Maharaj and uh, I'll find out and I'll answer your question, Mataji. Also, if it is for aspiring, uh, because I have not yet decided, I will be this disciple of So, um, that definition also I would like to get clarified. Like, uh, I mean, within how many days uh, one should take the initiation if one has already decided or something like that? Um, then uh, we can direct your question. You can write to Radha Bhakti. Um, uh, uh, Mataji, so that um, she can help you with that. Uh, I'll give her email address. You can write to her, Mataji. First, you can, uh, Mataji, first get the clarification from Mataji. Sure. Yes, Mataji. Yeah. Hey. Okay. We can conclude the class. Is that is that okay, Prabhuji? Yeah, I have to collect cash and revenue from school now anyway, so it's a good time. <laughs> Thank you for your wonderful class and association. <laughs> Thank you. Vancha kalpata rubyascha kripa sindhu vya eva cha patita naam pavane bhyo. Vaishnave bhyo namo namaha. Sama veta bhakta vrindh ki jai. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prabhu. Wonderful.